Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be seeing a handful of Chicago art galleries as well as the famous Art Institute of Chicago. However, we're going to start with breakfast at Lula, which was my favorite restaurant in Chicago. I highly, highly recommend the coconut banana muffin as well as the white sweet potato roasty. We also got the biscuits and gravy, which was lovely as well. We've got eight galleries on our list for today, and instead of curating shows of interest like I normally do, I researched general kind of gallery spaces around Chicago and their programs because I wanted to share more general recommendations for you all about Chicago art galleries that I would recommend going to. Our first stop is Patron Gallery. So this is a two-person exhibition with artists Jamal Cyrus and Harold Mendez. And the show explores, quote, how culture and its markers are preserved across boundaries, time, and language. The two have been friends for over a decade, and they both share an appreciation of jazz. And this is important because there are references to jazz in both artists' work, especially Cyrus's. My favorite works are these denim works from Cyrus, which he uses to explore the evolution of African-American identity. So he's been using denim since 2019 in an attempt to, quote, use the materials and format of the quilt to document aspects of Black political history. Harold Mendez is a Chicago-born, LA-based artist whose works in the similar vein to Cyrus had these small references to history, particularly overlooked pieces of history. An example of this is a basket weave patterned mat, which was, quote, originally found through Mesoamerica before and after conquests. Our next stop is Document Gallery, which is right down the street and in this complex with a number of other galleries. This is an exhibit of photography by Paul Maccabi Sapuya, and the show highlights his newest body of work called Blue Studio that continues his investigation of the studio as a place of portraiture and play, highlighting themes of the photographic gaze and the queer body under this really beautiful deep blue light. Right next door, conveniently, is Rona Hoffman Gallery, and on view here is an exhibit by Jacob Hashimoto titled Fables, which features his signature wall-mounted sculptures created from rice paper and bamboo kites. Each artwork consists of six layers of strong kites of varying dimensions, and this technical composition creates this really beautiful pixelated effect that also encourages movement, changing perspectives as the viewer moves around the work and sees it from different angles.
While Chicago is definitely a car city, I will say it was super easy to walk to each gallery. It was only about a 10 minute walk from Rona Hoffman over to our next stop, which is Marian Ibrahim, who I have been looking forward to since I've always been so impressed by her spaces in Paris and Mexico City. This is an exhibit of photographs by Lorraine O'Grady, and the exhibit starts in this room, which highlights the earlier works that bring together O'Grady's vision for this new persona that we'll see captured in the works in the next room of The Night. If you're not familiar with Lorraine O'Grady, she's known for her conceptual and performance art where, for example, in the early 1980s, quote, O'Grady created the persona of Madame Bourgeois Noir, who invaded art openings in New York wearing a gown and a cape made of 180 pairs of white gloves, giving away flowers, and then beating herself with a white studded whip, which she often referred to as the whip that made the plantations move. So whilst doing this, she would often shout in protest poems that rallied against a segregated art world that excluded Black individuals from the world of mainstream art, and which she perceived as not looking beyond this small circle of friends. O'Grady introduced this new persona of the night in 2021 at the height of the pandemic. And she had herself, quote, filmed as the night doing a performance without an audience in selected galleries of the Brooklyn Museum retrospective of her work. So under the watchful and approval gaze of Madame Bourgeois Noir, Invoked by this mannequin clothed in that iconic gown of white gloves, the knight declared her guiding concerns in the form of a 9.5 thesis, which is basically a list of propositions or arguments. So this part of the show features four announcement cards or photographic portraits of the knight that are meant to convey the knight's, quote, defining traits and behaviors and depict her in various stages of becoming. Our next stop is Sacrist Beach Gallery, formerly known as Cary Sacrist Gallery. And this is an exhibit by Hilma's Ghost, which is a feminist art collective made up of Sharmista Ray and Danielle Tegeter. And the show consists of three parts featuring selections of artworks made by the collective since their formation in 2020, as well as a new series of artworks. I absolutely love this little reading room. I love in general when galleries provide a place to sit and rest and enjoy and process the exhibit. It's not quite as common as you would think, unlike uh, museums. They also have a group show. This is a really huge space and I won't go into too much detail on that, but I will leave a link in the description box below if you'd like to explore that more. This part of the Hilma's Ghost show features 28 sigils made specifically for this presentation, which are meant to highlight how thoughts and intentions are represented visually in the realm of magic. If you're not familiar with sigils, they are, quote, magical symbols created to enhance our intentions, and they are widely utilized for spell casting and used as symbolic language. This work is a 16 foot long divinatory painting titled Cosmic Altar, and it was developed in collaboration with a psychic medium and a professional witch. This part of the show serves as a mini survey chronicling the collective's artistic journey from 2020 until now. And these are my personal favorites because they are actually painted on velvet.
You all are in for a real treat with this next gallery. This is Gray Gallery, formerly known as Richard Gray Gallery, and it has one of the most incredible spaces out of all the Chicago galleries, in my opinion. This is a two-person exhibit of 11 new works by MacArthur Binion and Gelatin and Silver Prince by Jules Allen. MacArthur Binion's new series of paintings titled Handmadeness explore what Binion calls the quote underconscious or visual signs of his identity arranged in this repeating grid pattern. So the images featured in his works come from a variety of personal sources such as his birth certificate, his address book, as well as photographs of himself, his hand, and his father and mother. Additional, more public and political sources are segments from a musical score that Binion commissioned by the Pulitzer Prize winning composer and saxophonist Henry Threadgill, and photographs depicting the reality of racial violence. However, the presence of these sources is mostly obscured by a combination of washes of Chinese ink and oil-based paint sticks. In 1978, Jules Allen moved to New York where he met MacArthur Binion, ultimately honing his vision in photographing black urban life. And this show features Allen's gelatin silver prints from the 1980s all the way up to the present, spanning multiple bodies of work, capturing a quote, communal portrait of the black urban landscape in New York. Our next stop is Corbett versus Dempsey Gallery, which has an exhibit by the Chicago-based artist Richard Wetzel. The show features nine works that have actually never been seen before since they were created by Wetzel between 1983 and 1985. And Wetzel's process has changed significantly over the years, moving away from depicting things inspired by real imagery and moving to invented imagery, which has resulted in these kind of biomorphic forms. And the works definitely have this sort of science fictional influence to them, which I think is really fun. In the back of the gallery, they have this really cool old vault. Unclear if it's an original of the building, I'm assuming so, but they use it as an exhibition space called The Vault, appropriately so. Featured today is this video work by Damon Locks, Terry Capsalis, Wayne Montana, and Rob Shaw.
Our final stop of today is going to be Anthony Gallery, and this is a group show titled Come One, Come All, featuring 30 contemporary artists, many of which you will recognize. And the works touch on a wide range of topics like culture in general, technology, and politics. And as always with group shows, I'll leave the name of each artist under their work, as well as more info linked in the description box if you want to research anyone a little more in depth. Now I'm going to take a little break for lunch. This is Small Cheval, which is a smaller and simplified version of O Cheval, which is a very famous and delicious restaurant known for their burgers, I would say. And because it's such a beautiful day, because we haven't done enough walking, we are going to go check out Millennium Park. And fear not, this is the outside of the Art Institute of Chicago. It's so beautiful. We're not going to go in today, but we are going to go back later in this video. So hang on for that.
Good morning, everyone. It is our last day in Chicago, and it has been such a great trip. We are starting the day at Avec, which has this beautiful ambiance and really great food. I would definitely recommend the focaccia. As you can see, it's not traditional focaccia. It's more of a flat sandwich that's filled with these incredible cheeses. Today, we are finally making it to the Art Institute of Chicago, starting with the Modern Wing. So the Art Institute of Chicago is very similar to the Met in terms of how large it is. And you can either enter on the Modern Wing side or the side housing the more traditional art. So I kind of love that you can choose your own adventure, if you will. This is the Modern Wing, which was designed by Renzo Piano, and it houses the museum's modern and contemporary art collection, as well as hosts a series of rotating exhibits. So we're first going to check out the contemporary collection and then move into the modern collection and then end with the more traditional American and European art. Also, the works that I'm featuring here, these are just highlights from their permanent collection. It is so extensive, I mean, it would be impossible to feature everything, so I did just want to call that out.
that's all I have for you from this trip to Chicago. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a little something new about Chicago if you're not familiar with the city. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I have some really exciting travels coming up to Stockholm, so you definitely don't want to miss that. And I will see you all in my next video.